If I walk out in the projects and this nigga shooting dice, selling dope, hanging on the corner, as a kid, your mind adapts to, to that lifestyle. If I walk out my door and I see people with briefcases going to work every day, hopping in new cars, then my mind gonna adapt to that. So it's about where you where you growing up in and what you seeing. And as a kid, my mind that's what I seen. So that's how I, I got on there, even though my mother was like this and teaching me this and showing me this. And she even was a teacher and probably a dumb boy. And I still like went this rap, like did what I did. You know what I'm uh, and I was in Fort Worth? Nah, that's in um, East Dallas. Okay. It's one in Fort Worth, too. Okay, okay. And so I'm like the fifth out of like seven kids, eight kids. You know what I'm saying? So you got no brothers and older than brothers and sisters? Yeah, most of my sisters and brothers are older than me. I just got two of them that's younger than me. Okay. So shit, how was that? Like, what was the household like? Uh, I had a good household. My brother. My brother was more like my father. You know, my daddy was in jail for um, for attempted murder. And so he done 10 years. So, like, okay, damn. Ten, how old was you when your pops was sentenced? Was um, I was in fourth grade when he was sentenced. And I got out when he was, I got out when he was, when I was, when he was 22. And so now he back in jail for murder. We was locked up together. Your pops? He went back. He got yeah. the same name as me. That's where my name come from. Okay. So he, uh, he got 45 years. I was in the penitentiary. I got 40 years. We were locked up together. Man. Yeah. And so he back in jail. So my older brother was more like my father figure. That's who bought my school clothes. That's who showed me how to play football. That's who showed me how to play basketball. Uh, so before I was before I was all the way in the streets, I was known really for sports. Like Lincoln High School, Percy Anderson, all the recreation centers in South Dallas. I put trophies out through the bitches. Way before the street shoot. So I was known for sports at first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you know, hell of a lot. Yeah. You know, you know like Byron Eaton and all of them? Like, you know, I had to do sports and that thing. But shit, that name sounds familiar. Yeah. Well, you know, Chris Washington was, right? Yeah, yeah. They yeah. all played together. Okay, sure. All them niggas grew up like, I grew up right in that era with them at the same school and shit like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. Now, so, okay, when you really like get into the streets, like, Oh, what age is that? I'm gonna say probably like 
And when you play sports, bro, because I know that that's like love at that age. Like, uh, you're really into sports. I'm going to be honest with you. When I got shot, that would make the sports go away. That would really made me just jump out in the field. Because before then, I was going to school, but I was still trapping. And I'm still playing football for the school. You know? So, um, and so, uh, that's when it, that's when it, that's when everything jumped out. But like in sixth grade, seventh grade, we were skipping school. I had a homeboy named Pepe, he got killed in the drive by with me. And um Damn, what year is this? This was like I was like I was like 16, 17. Yeah. He got killed. But uh, we were in South Alley, you know, they shot my car, hit his car, hit him in the head. And um uh, and uh Yeah. And so after that, that's when it, you know. Right. Oh, but it's, uh, I know you get shot. So how many times you get shot in total? Uh, twice. Twice. Okay. Damn. Okay. So when you get shot the first time, which time? I, I was 16. 16. 15 or 16. One. You like shit. Like what? What? How? How did it affect you at that time? You know what I'm saying? Uh, as a kid, I, I, I really. Well. I always been a, uh, I've been, I always been like a real tough, tough. So thinking about my future as a kid, because now I can't play football no more. I can't do these certain things. So all that shit made me like the nigga I am today because I matured quite fast. So as my homeboys was playing, was still running ride bikes, um, catching the bus, going to house parties, I was sitting in the projects in the greenway with a pack. So I was already learning to get money and, and do certain shit because I ain't got time to go run and play no more. I wasn't playing no more. This thing was like, I'm finna give me some money in And so it made me it made me a trip quicker. So my mind, all my homeboy had already been following me before I got shot. So when I got shot, they still were following me. You know what I'm saying? So I already had like respect and power before the money. That's a young age. So I go up in the schoolhouse and step on all of this. So I just a true story. Now so you said something in your interview that stood out to me, but you said your mama told you like shit, God only uh put you through certain shit because you can handle it. Yeah. Like shit, that's that's what real shit. Nah, I'm a, this is a true story. I was laying in the hospital when I got shot, homie. And all my sisters and brothers, I asked my mama as a kid, and I remember laying in the hospital, I said, Mama, out of all your kids. Why God choose me the one to get shot? When I'm the one that's talented, I'm the one that's and she told me, she looked in my eyes, she said, because God knew you were the strong one out of my kid, you the one that can yeah. yeah, she told me that. So and before I got shot, she was just about to put me in boot camp because I was acting up, I was wild. So I was coming home with a car, like 15 coming home with a car, speaking to them bitches, buying my own school clothes. So I had her thinking that I was working with one of my homeboys, pop pop. That's why I was getting the money from. But the whole time I was trapped. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to park my car down the street because my older brother went no. So when my little sister them get on the bus to go to school, I walk the other way, go jump in my car and drive to school. <laughs> nah, for real. Yeah. So okay, that, that's a bit. Now shit, bro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You 16, you got in your mind. Like, I'm finna. Uh, like, I'm finna. I'm the man. I'm, I gotta be a man now, man. Up. Yeah. So like, you paying bills at home? Oh uh, yep. Yeah, my mama used to make me put two on about two hundred dollars or something. And I had just had my daughter. I had my daughter on like 15, 15, 15, 16. Damn. Yeah. So damn. she was like two months when I got shot. Okay, damn. So like how was that bro? Like raising your kid and and you still adjusting to, you know, being in a wheelchair. It went little. Bro went that bro. I think some shit just in me. Like I'm really like, I don't know, bro. Like my my it didn't fit shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I pick my daughter up and do do everything with her like same shit you like today. I just had a little boy like five months ago. So so like you know like bro, I feel like now bro, parents are not really in a lot of people's lives. Like a lot of people don't have that type of structure in their life. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's what was really affecting what's going on today. That's true. But shit, moving forward, but uh now shit like okay, when Teddy Wayne, when you just, your name just start getting, like, big. Uh -oh. <coughs> she started young. Yeah. I was real young, bro. 
Cause I, like I told you, I'm known for sports and fighting and shit like that in South Alabama. Yeah. So you know, I'm gonna go to Oak Cliff, Pleasant Grove, and play football, basketball. I'm starting the team. Yeah, like you should, the first time you went to prison, you said your papa was already in prison at that time. No, no. The first time my father went to prison, I was like in fourth grade. He got out when I was like 21. Okay. And then in 2013, I got convicted. And I got 40 years. Damn. In 2014, you said 2013. 13, I got convicted. Then I got 40 years in jail. So I was already in the penitentiary. I was talking to my dad on the phone. And then one day I called home and I asked my mama where he was. And she said he was in jail for murder. And Damn. then like a year later, they put him in the same unit with me, in the same cell with me. Damn. So we did like, we did like four, five years together in jail. In you know, the same cell. And so what was so crazy about that is, like you just said, um, today a lot of parents don't be in their kids' life. Yeah. It's sad to say, but. Some of the things that I didn't get to do with my daddy as a kid, I got to do with him in jail. Like we played chess, we played domino, went to shot basketball. You know, when they called Stokey, buy me ice cream like I'm still a kid. So I had to tell him like, daddy, quit waking me up, get me ice cream. And I'm a grown man now, you know what I'm saying? But he's still in his mind, still his, that's my son. So he used to wake me up and give me ice cream. Cause as a kid, sometimes he was locked up. He didn't get to take me to the ice cream truck. So I used to sit there and look at the nigga and be like, damn. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing shit in jail with my dad that I ain't do as a kid. And I don't know if that's how God wanted to play out. Well, you know, because he might not make it out of him. My old man, he's like 50 something years old. And he got 45 years, so yeah. I might not see him again. My, my son might not see him again. My grandson might not see him again. You know what I'm saying? So, no good shit, bro. That's, that's crazy, bro. Like, now, what was that time like you were in prison? Like, what's, like, how you doing your time? Like, did that help, you know, the time pass? Um, you said you had 10 years? 40 years. 40 years. I had 40. My daddy how, got 45. How, how much you ended up serving? I ended up, like, six and a half years on it. Okay. I only been out of jail, like, two and a half years. Damn. Okay, okay, okay. For sure, for sure. Nah, shit. I actually this, bro, because I'm actually I'm going to interview a nigga that has a prison channel. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of OG Hollywood. I heard of him. Uh, but he, he does shit like that, too. We go get an interview in the mall. But, uh, shit, like, a lot of people was interested in that, bro. Like, what was so, like, jail, like, nobody wanted to go to jail, you know what I'm saying? But once they knew the reality of it, like, what was that like for you? Uh, Jail, jail, jail was, uh, it was, it was, it was, it wasn't shit doing it, but when you think about your loved ones and the people you, you care about, uh, missing Christmas, missing birthdays, sometimes you, 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 you like, damn, man, was this money worth me missing this? Damn, was, was my daughter Christmas? Was it worth it? It made me think of like that. But during the time, it wasn't shit to me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, it's, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like. It just it become life. That's become life. life. Yeah. It become sure. life. So I, I done it. I done the shit. And, 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 and I went in the penitentiary. Let me tell you something. I'm in a penitentiary in a wheelchair. It's like every nigga on the unit respect me. Every nigga from Dallas came that with bloods. For this, I didn't even know what the, what the shit mean at first. So niggas used to come to my cell and put their arm through my cell and be like, I'm coming to get your blessings. So I'm like, get my blessings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I went to one of the other niggas, blood niggas, and I said, man, why these niggas keep coming to my cell? They get off the, off the plane and say, come to get my blessings. They say, because you're like, like a blood nigga from the city and you respect it. So they like to be with you and like, you get your, you know, you like, you blessing them in. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know. But yeah, so are you, 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 I don't even know, you know, are you for you blood? I'm blood. Well, I used to bang. I used to cut off a bunch on So we yeah. were blood. But, but it's like, once you put in so much work, you ain't, ain't, ain't going to see me on video with red flags and gang banging. And I'm strictly about some paper. But as a kid, I was with that, with that, and, 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 and like, I lost my partner behind it. The one who was shooting, the guy shot with me. Yeah. That's because we was on some triple blood shit. That's how he got killed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't gonna never be like, I ain't gonna rip that because I lost somebody behind it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it ain't just, I gotta just be on no, 
I don't know why I just shit with that shit, but right. but niggas from my hood, when I see them, we lock the cell, man, we lock the beats. But uh, yeah. Was this a is it a lot of gang politics like that in prison really? Or is it just like whatever, whatever? Uh, like, yeah, it's a lot of gang politics in prison. Um, um you gotta, you gotta know who for real with that shit and who using you for that shit. Cause some niggas just get down just to be cool. You got some niggas get down because they might not get money on their books. So one of the 21 laws of being a blood is our dogs eat together. You know what I'm saying? That's a law in your 21 laws. And that's, I know that law. So niggas will use that law for advantage and, and just to eat with the, cause they can eat. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta know who for real with it and who ain't. And it's like some niggas, I had niggas on the unit that had attitude with me because everybody I ain't like bees with me because I didn't know your attention. You know what I'm saying? And some niggas that came from where I was from, I would like to be with them. You know what I'm saying? So I had a nigga tell me before, like, why like, you never like to be with me? Why you just out with that me up? And I had to tell that nigga, like, I don't like bees, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what your bees stand for. So, you know what I'm saying? That's real. That's real. Now, see, you, you say you've been out two years, you get out, like, and when, well, first let's go back to your pops, bro. Like, when did y'all split sales? Uh, we never split sales till it was time for me to go home. Okay, so when you leaving, like, man. He was like, at the door talking to me. Like, yeah. son, I love you. Uh, I don't want you to come back up. And so in my mind, I was really pissed off and angry in jail a lot because some niggas I ran with told on me. They all read it. So I used, to, I used to tell myself and myself, I'm gonna kill all the pussies. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas know me. I'm saying, I pulled up on every last one of them niggas since I've been out. Yeah. Sort of this is a true story. And told them how I feel and what I thought. And I know a coward when I see him because they always put it on the other one. Nah, he said this and he said this. So he let me know, like, you really pussy. You know what I mean? I put up on all of them, asked all of them about it. You know what I'm saying? And they all told. So in my mind, my daddy, I just tell my dad, I'm just spanked them niggas. But when I was in my cell, I used to have to, like, be humble. I had to be sincere with God and tell God, like, God, that part of me gone, I'm, I'm gonna wipe that out because he ain't gonna never let me get out of jail. My mama used to tell me, he ain't gonna never let you get out. But you still in your mind, like, this how you feel. You know what I'm saying? And I really used to feel like, I'm gonna get your bitch out of here. I used to wipe them nigga little, like, nigga, nigga, you can't, nigga, you. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, I really feel like that. And they know me, these niggas I'm talking about, they know me. They know me, like, no life, like, I'm like, nothing sweet. You know what I'm saying? But I guess if I got 40 years, nigga, like, I won't gonna get back there. You know what I'm saying? But, so how you how you beat the 40 year sentence? I didn't. I did my time on it. I'm on 34 year parole right now. Mm -hmm. I'm on parole for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 34 years. Yeah, I got 34 years left on parole. You still got some life man. Man, I be man, I be what seven something years old. Damn. When I get out of parole, I be seven years old, bro. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not old, but I'm saying that's a long that's time. A long ass time. Even if you, even if you 30, you got 34 years of parole. You gonna get out when you 64, 65. Yeah, like, um, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's real. That's real. Not shit, bro. Is it any way to like get that sentence? Like, my yeah. lawyer told me after like 10 years, if I don't get in no trouble, he can get a split. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we gonna, we gonna see. Nah, for sure, for sure. Not shit. Uh, Come on, bro. Oh no, you, you leave the prison. You know what I'm saying? Like any words of encouragement that your pops gave you before you left. Man, the main thing my father told me when I got up, man. I'm gonna tell you some real shit he told me. He said, "It's a part of you." This what he told. It wasn't, this one ain't encouraging, but I knew what he was talking about. He said, "It's some in you that you don't know that's in you." And he said, "Cause it's in your dad." And I said, "I said, Dad, I done done everything." I said, so, 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 so. He said, nah, son, listen to me. He said, something that's in you, that you don't know what's in you. And I don't know if he was talking about killer, his killer instincts or what, but he done went down a couple times for some shooting or, and when I'm like, and then he was like, and I, I didn't get it, but, but, but his action in jail towards other people, his aggressiveness, I kind of like knew what he was talking about, but I'm like, I'm looking at this nigga in his eyes, and I'm like, I'm like, but, you know what I'm saying? Because he kept saying that before I left, I didn't know. He touched me like this. He said, it's something in you that you don't know that's in you. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm like, I done did everything. I know what's in me. I like, nah, you ain't did this. And I'm still kind of lost, but I'm, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you can name it. I didn't, I didn't really like done this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't been shot, the shot, nigga, been jacked, and jacked, nigga. And sold everything from a nipple rock to a brick. And sold everything from a dime bag to 50 pounds. And so it's like, I ain't done everything except that. So I'm like, what else, what else it could be there? You know what I'm saying? And he told me, I'm, I tell you about it. <laughs> So even when he called home from jail, man, I still be asking him, man, what you was talking about when I was locked up? I will get around to you. <laughs> he keep throwing me out, you know what I'm saying? Do you ever go visit him? Uh, you know, with the corona stuff going on, you ain't bad with the visit. They just now started back to do that. Okay. But he called all the time. My phone was set up. Mama phone was set up. Sister's phone was set up. Sure. For sure, for sure. Now, uh, shit, come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? You get straight to it. We see you with Trap Boy Freddy, like, what's your relationship with Trap Boy? Um, 